if a game development company is like an oven where you put, you know, you put pastries in there and they bake and it takes a little while and you're like, oh, it's starting to smell nice. The, the behemoth is like a giant oven with absolutely no covering. It's just a big fucking window. And that whatever they're doing, whatever they're making, however it's going down, they just you just get to see it. And they the the moment you put they put it in there, they just put they make the raw ingredients into the thing they're baking in the window. So we all get to watch for like three and a half years and wait and want. And then they're like, it's almost done, and they they take it out and they're like, eh, I don't like this. So they put it back in there and they do it all over again. <sighs> but it's out now. The Battle Block Theater, the Battle Block Theater is finally out. And, uh, I don't know, I'm reviewing it, so that's the point of the intro thing that I explained to you. If you're here, you already know what it is. Chad, just watch the fucking video. Battle Block Theater is a game about friendship. Specifically, this friendship. And the friends in it. Although after a massive storm hits, there really aren't that many friends left. You eventually crash land on a strange island with a massive, cat-infested theater, and find your friend Hattie Haddington being appropriately fitted with... Uh, well, well, a hat. But, uh... Something, something's wrong. Clench your butt, this isn't gonna be good! Ah! Yep, that wasn't good. Your giant, fluffy, smelly captors have thrown you in prison with the rest of your friends, and the cats are like, deal with it. In your cell, you find a mysterious sign on the wall, and while it's your choice whether or not to follow it, I simply couldn't resist. What'd you do that for? Oh. Well, that was pleasant. Keeping in line with mystery, a lot of strange things are going on in Battle Block Theater. For one, the game consists of you performing for the cats instead of perhaps traversing some kingdom or wasteland to save your friend. Why the keys to each jail cell are contained within the theater instead of being held by, I don't know, one of these guys is beyond me. But fuck it, nothing else in this game makes any sense, so why start now? Either way, it's safe to say we're in quite a pickle jar here. Or start ever. Oh, by the way, that glorious voice you're hearing, nah, not mine, I, I meant the one from the game, is the Newgrounds vocal sensation known as Stamper. He's the narrator, and he says things like this. Don't let those things zap you, it burns and it hurts a lot. All the time. However, his narration isn't like Bastion. He's really there to make jokes while you play and then explain story elements between chapters. He's like a play narrator mixed with an MC who only knows just a little bit more than you at each chapter's conclusion, so you get to kind of learn stuff, but also it's not like, hey, I don't know something you don't know. It's more like, I know this thing, but I don't seem to know the next thing for some reason. I don't know why. Now, you might not think of this game as one of those big narrative super stories with all kinds of interesting characters and side plots, and it's not. It isn't. But the theme holds. It really does. It, and it keeps you interested in sort of like, why are there cats? And there's some cool tricks that they do with the environment and the overworld. It's not really like an overworld, it's like, like kind of like the level select um, that, are, that are interesting and they keep you sort of uh, fixated on the end goal of saving Hattie. Battle Block Theater is somewhat of a unique beast. Or quite a bit of one. It's a 2D plat fuzzler in which you collect gems hidden throughout the level to proceed. The shiny green MacGuffins are arbitrary acquirements for you to, uh, you know, have fun. Between levels, you can go to the gift shop to visit your best friend turned head boss man, Hattie. He's, uh, he's just chilling, you know, having a, having a good stare. His chair looks pretty comfy, yeah, I mean, got a little, nice little cushion there. But uh, be careful, Hattie. I mean, you sit there too long, you might get a hemorrhoid. And that's no fun. In the gift shop, you can pay the kitty curators the gems you've collected to free your fellow friends. For maximum comfort, they've all been crammed into these giant gachapon machines, and you free them one at a time, at random. Sometimes you get a guy like this, and sometimes you get a guy like this. And sometimes you get a... Yeah, you get a... Uh, you get one of these. If you have some you don't like, and someone has some you do, you can trade for them. But if you're like me, you're just gonna collect them all on your own. For cats, these things can be pretty cruel. Could you imagine being crammed into a machine with a bunch of your friends and then having to pee and poop all over each other? Ooh, It's just way too personal. Now that we've covered incentive, let's look at what you're actually playing. The levels are 100% tile-based. Tile-based means there's a grid system in place, and each box in the grid has either some kind of block or nothing. And each block has some sort of behavior, or it's just a block. 
See that, like that one, that's just a block. But most of the blocks do things, crazy things, like fire lasers, trigger other blocks, or toast your buns, or toast these buns, or burn these toasts. Ooh, uh, oh, my ass. <laughs> Silly things like the over affectionate toast aren't the limit. Oh, oh, oh no. This, uh, this thing right here, this is a horse. Uh, it's also fucking adorable. Oh my god, look at his little face. It's like a cube, little rectangle guy, little stubby ass legs, derpy face. Woo! These guys are like your best friends, except for Hattie. But Hattie's kind of boring right now. They also walk on spikes. Now, tiling is a pretty common level design setup, but it usually results in some homogeneous map layout. Fortunately, Battle Block Theater sports a terrifyingly diverse array of blocks, many of which interact with each other or with the player in varying ways. This keeps the gameplay from getting stale. As if this could ever get stale. Oh man, it's, it's one of these puzzles. I got all the blocks in the way and you gotta, you gotta move them to find the thing. Alright, see, okay, so one down, not, not hard, not hard. And then the second one, no, oh, okay, no, I got it. Alright, put this here, got it, now I just have to leave. Oh, there's a block in the way. Wait, no, wait, I think I've got it, got it, got it, got it. Alright, look at that, see, I'm a, I'm a fucking genius, I know everything, oh, fuck. As it turns out, your prisoner is somewhat of a martial artist. Your standard array of attacks include a sweep, a push, a volleyball thing, slide kick, punch in the face, uppercut, and a final smash. In fact, you're such a crazy wushu master, you can even kick back grenades and spike back gloopy orbs of death. Oh man, those weapons look so cool. I wish I could have one. Well, you can. By collecting yarn balls cleverly tucked away behind difficult puzzles or yeah, things like that, you can bribe the cat guards to give you their weapons, just like with the gems and the prisoners. Hey, I got a ball. It bounces. Bounce. Yay. After Castle Crashers rock couch after couch all across XBLA, and then PS3, and now on PC, it would have been tough to imagine their next game without some cooperation. What's in Battle Block Theater, though, I'm not so sure. Technically, yes, you can play the game with a friend online or on couch, but is this really cooperating? Hit it! Buckle your pants, buckle, buckle your pants. Pull up your socks and dance. Buckle, buckle your pants. Buckle, 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 buckle your pants. Buckle your pants, buckle, buckle your pants. Hey, I said dance. Buckle, 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 buckle your pants. Ladies. Yeah, we're not friends anymore. I love flat-fuzzling games. And there's a reason for that. I just happen to like those kinds of, that sort of game design is so expansive. There's so much you can do with the idea of a dude, or a lady, or an animal, or a robot, whatever, on in a 2D environment. And so in Battle Block Theater, you know, you've got like, you just got blocks. <laughs> it's a big grid. It's a big square. I, I love all of the little interactive moments. I love like blocking a laser thing with a movable block. And I love like with the little raccoon monster that chases you. It's, it's pretty fun. It's fucking, it's just enjoyable. After the grief catastrophe is over, there's the multiplayer arena. The arena is comprised of mostly two versus two game modes, each with their own bit of battle block personality. By sheer complete happenstance, I have a trailer to fit this very specific occasion. It's almost like I made it myself. Who's ready for some fun? Well, don't everybody answer at once. What? Welcome to the Battle Block Theater Arena. What kind of theaters have arenas, you ask? The Battle Block kind. Choose from modes like Soul Snatcher and Play Death, stepping on people's heads and ripping their souls out through their throats. There's also Muckle if you're into the whole vanilla deathmatch thing. Vanilla with the side of Hadouken. But hey, sometimes fighting just for the sake of body parts and explosions isn't enough, and I get that. So what would you rather fight over? Shiny golden blocks in a territorial bout of King of the Hill? How about jamming the golden poop cubes of a floating whale into a winged safe and grab the gold? Not a fan of touching poops? Well, I don't blame you. But what about touching horses? Or better yet, capturing horses. In Capture the Horse. Like coloring? I fucking love coloring. But paint is expensive, so in Color the World mode, you just slam your face into gray blocks to claim them as your own. Somebody else smearing their body on your blocks, kick their face in. Having a beef with someone on the internet? Unless it's a delicious kind, challenge them to a 1v1 in challenge mode. Who's the fastest? Is it you? Probably not. 
Soul Muckle King Safe Horse Color Challenge. And one more. One last mode to rule them all. Boom shakalaka! Boom shakalaka! Bangalanga Duda! Ball game is the absolute pinnacle of sports themed battle block competition. And it's like basketball, except about 10 times faster, 10 times more dangerous, and 10 times more awesome. This is your theater, baby! Please enjoy your stay. Now, if you're thinking that's a lot of content already, you'll be glad to know you're absolutely wrong. To ensure Battle Block Theater could be played forever, the Behemoth even threw in a freaking level editor. Since none of the details will matter to those who haven't played the game yet, I won't go into them. Just know that the level editor featured in Battle Block Theater gives you access to the exact same tools that the devs used. And if including a level editor weren't enough, you can also upload to and browse the community's servers with relative ease. Now I fancy myself pretty good at game design, you know, I've been playing games for quite a few years. And really that's all there is to it, right? I think that's all you need to be able to make the video games. So uh, I made myself, uh, I made a little level, and I'm a... Uh, just to, just to show you guys how good I am. Just take a look. Okay, so all you gotta do, you just have to, you get the, you get the strawberries by jumping along the, no, oh, okay, hold on, There's, okay, so you get, when you get onto the, the pink things, you just, you, okay, you just have to dodge the lasers, and, okay, well, or you, you, you gotta dodge the blades, too, so just, so you dodge, dodge the blades, and then you dodge the lasers, see, look, you just gotta, oh, oh, yeah. Look, see, you did it. Good job. Of all the awesome things in this game, the presentation plays second fiddle to none. Uh, not sure it plays the fiddle at all, actually, but I do know it plays some pretty groove-tastic music. You've been listening to it throughout this review. The soundtrack is mostly quite cheerful, booping and bopping around, keeping things happy and fun. It's the goofy sort of music to match the strange yet crisp art the Behemoth is known for. So we've got a surprisingly lengthy single player with a, with a pretty silly story, fun, it's, it's, it's engaging, the cool narrator. You got online and offline co-op, which is grief-tastic and actually encourages cooperation in certain moments. We've got no-death insane modes for both, competitive multiplayer with eight different modes, and a level creation system which allows you to put things onto servers and then play them so everybody can play everything that everyone makes. This game really is a complete package. And everything's coming together like butt cheeks. You know, Stamper, I couldn't have said it better myself.